Hey guys, what's up? This is Manas, your friend and tutor, and I'm back with another video on friction. So let's see what this problem has in store. Here we go. So over here we have a car, right? And we have a sort of inclined surface at an angle theta. Now, um, there is this very important term given to us, rear wheel drive. So all the power developed from the engine is directly transferred to the to the rear wheel, you can say. Okay, so therefore the friction is going to act on those two set of wheels. Now, if you watch carefully, this is the point of contact that the rear wheels uh, seems to have with the ground. You can say, let's call this as point A and let's call this as point B. Now, obviously there is going to be some normal offered from the ground. Okay, let's call this as NB. And also there is going to be a normal offered over here at point A that is gonna be NA. Now, this is slightly confusing. We need to determine the friction force or where the direction of friction force is. And if you watch carefully, if I can just make a circle over here in the form of sort of a wheel. Okay, it is trying to at this point where the motion is happening is this. This is where the motion is happening. And the nature of friction force will be to oppose this motion. Okay, here. So obviously we know that the wheel is going to move after some time it is going to come to this point. But here, since it's an action of rolling, the direction of friction will be along the direction of motion. Remember this, the car is trying to move forward this way, this way, okay, this way. Let me try to make it and let's call this as the positive x and this is along the direction of motion, you can see, although there is no motion, this is a purely a static case, nothing moves whatsoever and this is positive y, you can say. So here we go, therefore, here, this is the rolling motion. And to oppose this rolling motion, we have the friction, something like this, something like this. And let me rather use a blue color and we're going to call this mu and this is Na. We're going to call this mu Na. So these were essentially all the forces acting on the wheels. Now the weight of the car, rather the mass of the car has been given to us. Mass is 2000 kgs and let me just write this mass of the car is 2000 kgs. But right now we are dealing with forces and weight is also a force. So corresponding to some mass, there is going to be weight. And here we go. This weight can be written as mg that is 2000 multiplied by 9.81. You just got to do this calculation and this value. Let me tell you, this is going to work out as 19620 newtons. Don't worry about this. We are going to put this up later on when our final equation is framed. So the value of W is 19620. Now W can essentially be resolved into components. If you watch carefully, this over here is angle theta. So W is going to have two components here. Okay, this is gonna be W cos theta. And here also, we're going to have one component. This is going to be W sine theta. So this these are essentially all the forces acting on the car, okay? And its wheels also. Now let's go ahead and let's try to find the maximum angle theta that the car can successfully climb. Here we go. So we are going to deal with three equations of equilibrium in this problem. Let me tell you. Summation of all the forces in x direction is equal to zero. Okay. So if you watch carefully, this is mu Na. Okay. Towards the right hand side. So this is positive x. This is positive y. So this is uh, mu Na positive and this W sine theta negative. Mu Na minus w sine theta is equal to zero so let's call this guys as our equation number one okay second equation this is going to be for all the forces along y direction and it's going to be equal to zero now you can clearly see this is this is the positive y okay or the y direction na and nb will be positive and w cos theta well it's downwards therefore negative that's it so let us just write And let's call this as our equation number two. All right, so two equations have been framed successfully. Now, if you if you can just count the number of unknowns that we do have is it's one, two, and three. That is NB, NA, and theta, three unknowns. Right now we are having only two equations. So to determine three unknowns, we need three equations. And this is going to be our third equation. That is moment of all the forces acting along this plane, okay, on the screen in which we are watching this video moment of all those forces is equal to zero about any any point you can take okay the moment of all these forces will be equal to zero as this is the case of an object 
being in a state of rest. So I'm going to choose this point, this point right here, okay, the contact uh, where the wheel, the rear wheel makes with the ground and it's, let's say this point is A. Well, why am I choosing this point? The reason being very simple, you can clearly see mu and A and NA, both of them are passing through this point and for a moment we need the perpendicular distance. So if I were to drop a perpendicular from this very point onto these two forces, its value is going to be zero. Therefore, the task becomes very easy. These two forces will have their moments as zero. The only forces that we are left with is this W cosine theta, W sine theta and this NV. Okay, so the problem becomes very easier. You now have to deal with only three genuine forces. Here we go. So first of all, let's work out this NV and it's going to be something like this. If you, if you keep your thumb over here, right hand thumb and try to move your baby finger, this one, okay, this one, try to move your baby finger along this direction, you'll see that this force produces an anti-clockwise moment. Therefore, positive, this is force and this is the perpendicular, 1 plus 0.5, that is 1.5. So it's going to be 1.5 times of NB. Done, this force is done. The next force that I'm going to talk about is this W cosine theta. So if again, keep your thumb, right hand thumb at A, try to move your baby finger along this direction, this way, this way, it produces a clockwise moment and this is going to be W cosine theta multiplied by 1. Again, since it's a clockwise moment, negative sign and W cos theta into 1 is nothing but W cosine theta itself. Then we have this W sine theta. Now, if you keep your thumb over here and try to move your baby finger along this direction, it produces rather an anti-clockwise moment. Now, this is positive. So, this over here is the force and if I were to drop a perpendicular from A, it would be this one. Okay, this distance is nothing but 0 0.25, right? So this is the force and this is the perpendicular distance. So W sine theta multiplied by 0 0.25. Let me just write 0 0.25 times W sine theta and all of this stuff is going to be equal to 0. Now guys, what we need to do is we need to frame this equation in a much better way. What we can do is from this equation to, um, we can write this NB is equal to W cos theta minus Na, W cos theta minus Na. And from this equation, you can clearly see that Na is actually equal to W sine theta upon mu, W sine theta um, upon mu, that's it. In place of this Na, you can put this value. Now, all, all this stuff, I'm going to do it over here. And finally, let me just write this 1.5 times of, let me put up the value of Nb. W cos theta done minus Na. What's Na? Na is W sin theta over mu. W sin theta over mu. Fine. And what else? And this minus W cosine theta. The remaining stuff is same. Okay, guys. Now what you can do is you can take W as common from all these four terms that we are seeing right now. W can be taken as common and over to the right hand side we have zero. So W will automatically eliminate itself. The remaining stuff is, let me go ahead and write it. Now guys, what you can do is you can, you can sum these two cos terms and you can sum these two sine terms. And the stuff that remains is 0 0.5 cos theta minus 4.75 sin theta and all of this is going to be equal to zero. You can solve this equation. This is pretty easy. Tan theta is going to be equal to 2 over 19. And when you do the inverse, theta is going to work out as finally 6.009 degrees approximately. So this is exactly how the maximum inclination of the car can be determined. So guys, that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query, do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has enhanced your knowledge of engineering mechanics, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon for instant notifications. Well, I'm going to see you in the next lecture. Until then, take care and have a nice day. Thank you.